Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about Turing machine for a n, p n, c n for n greater than equal to 1. I hope you all remember that when we talked about push down automata, we proved with the help of pumping lemma that a n, b n, c n is not context free and we cannot draw a push down automata for a n, b n, c n. So now we will discuss how we will draw a Turing machine for a n, b n, c n. Say for example, I have input on the tape double A followed by double B followed by double C. So my tape will start reading from first input that is A. Whenever it comes across first A, it should start search for first B and then first, first C so that number of A is equal to number of B and it, which is further equal to number of C. Likewise, second A, second B and second C. If we say that the tape has B double A B double C, if I count number of A, number of B and number of C, they are two. But is this input correct? Of course not because B should follow A and C should follow B. We should not have B followed by A. Now what are the intuitions behind design of Turing machine for A and B and C? And? The major objective is that number of A should be equal to number of B, which should be further equal to number of C. And tape begin with A followed by B and then C. When the first element is A, convert it into capital A and start searching for B. When you find B, convert it into capital B and then start searching for C and convert it into capital C. Keep on traversing the tape by conversion of small a, small b and small c to capital A, capital B and capital C respectively. Final state should be reached when the tape has all capital A, B and C. I will discuss each and every part of this machine why we have considered designing the machine for A and B and C and in this particular manner. If we come across this machine, we find that first from Q0 to Q1 state, we say if we get small a converted into capital A. Next is, a loop on Q1. When we are moving towards finding first small b, we will come across small a in between. So we have a self loop of that. We will not change that small a. So we have a a r. We keep on moving towards right. Once we have converted, when we are moving back, we will be having capital B also intermediate between small a and small b. That is why we have kept capital B, capital B, R. After this, we move to small b, which will be converted into capital B and we will be moving right to find out small c. When we are traversing from b to c, we will come across small b and capital C. So we keep them intact, b, b, r, c, c, r. Then we move towards small c, when we come across small c, we will convert this into capital C because we have already converted small a into capital A, small b into capital B. We have this loop because once we have converted small c into capital C in the previous step, we start moving towards left. When we start moving toward left, we may come across small a, small b, capital B and capital C. And we need to keep on moving to the left without changing any of these inputs. Then we come across last point that is capital A which we had converted at the Q0 state itself. Now this capital A will serve as an end marker for this tape on the left side. End marker means that whenever we will come across capital A, we will stop the machine moving further towards the left and the machine will again start moving towards right. We have three loops. One is on Q1. Another is on Q2 and third is on Q3. Why do we have only two inputs on Q1 and Q2 whereas four inputs on Q3? When we are in Q1 state, we will never come across small c or capital C. So that is why on Q1 we have only loop of small a and capital B. Whenever we are on Q2 state, that means we have already surpassed a and b. Now we will come across only small b and capital C. But when we are moving backwards, we may come across all four symbols. That is why on Q3 we have A, B, capital V and capital C. Look into this loop of Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. We actually find that in this loop we are converting small a into capital A, small b into capital B, small c into capital C and then moving back to 
capital A. So this is the cycle which is actually completing this A N B N C N. Once all A have been converted into capital A, now we need to keep track of all capital B and capital C. That is, we need to check that there is no input left out on the tape which is in small letters. Once we have done this, then we move towards the final state. The delta at the last point of the tape serve as a end marker for this. Now we start with the actual machine. Here we have A2, B2, C2. At Q0 state, first element which is read is small a. As per the inputs, it is converted into capital A. We move ahead, we come across small a. No change, self loop on Q1. Move to the next symbol that is small b. Convert this small b into capital B and move towards the right. Again, we come across small b. No change. We are searching for first C since we have already converted first A into capital A and first B into capital B. The moment we come across first C, we will convert it into capital C. Now at this point, we have A1, B1, C1 traversed and we will start moving towards the end marker on the left side which we discussed in the previous slides is capital A. So, all the symbols which we come across, we will not change them and we will only try to locate where is the first capital A on the left side. When we come across capital A, we will change the direction of our head towards the right and start searching for in small a converted into capital A, move ahead, we come across capital B, no change, move ahead. We come across second small b converted into capital B. We have traversed second capital A and second capital B. Now we want to search for third C. We come across C, we convert it into capital C and we move backwards. When we are moving back, we will not convert any symbol. That is, if it is capital B, it will remain as it is. If it is capital A, it will remain as it is. And this capital A will serve as the end marker for the left side of the tape. When we are on Q0 state, we will try to find whether any small a is left out which needs to be converted into capital A. Since there is no small a at this point, that means all the small a have been converted into capital A. So we move to capital B. We need to identify that all the small b have been converted into capital B or not and all the small c have been converted into capital C or not. Since we come to the stage where all B and all C have been converted into their capital counterparts and we have reached the last point that is delta. We have read delta, write delta and move to the final state. So this is the combined trace. For the TM for A and B and C N, we had given the trace at every individual step also on the right side of every slide. Thanks.